part of this um, forum series. Um, we're delighted to welcome you here to our church, United Methodist Church of Green Valley. Uh, I'm Jerry Haas, and I'm, I guess by default, kind of been the coordinator for this. Um, and I'll tell a little bit more about myself first. I, I did want to also uh, mention that this has been a kind of a journey of love and adventure for um, a number of us. Some people have been with us from the very beginning. Uh, when Ken Benson and I started talking, Ken Benson, our associate pastor there in the back of the room, uh, we started talking about family members and being concerned and not sure what to do. And so we decided we would start by trying to learn as much as we could. And uh, I knew about this book um, that we're recommending as kind of the primary resource for us, at least to provide the framework for us. And so that book is, uh, is what we're uh, offering for, uh, for kind of a spiritual guidance through this, through this journey. Uh, and it is kind of a journey. Um, why don't you go ahead and put a couple of more slides up. This first session um, should be coming up next. Yeah, session one, the how and the why, the why and the how. And then uh, I wanted to say something about the overall topic um, that fascinates me, which is the spirituality of aging. What is it like to enter into this journey? Um, and you know, there's a lot that's focused in around what it's like in terms of our development as, as young people in our spiritual life, et cetera. But what does it mean as we, as we get older? What does it mean? Um, and sometimes people feel like their beliefs are all set. You know, by the time you're 30 years old or 40 years old or whatever. Um, and you don't realize that, you know, the journey oftentimes begins in a new way. Uh, when you enter into retirement and you begin facing some frailties in your life, another spiritual journey really begins. Um, in fact, uh, what I wanted to offer to you is uh, uh, just a little bit more about me, first of all. Um, I am a United Methodist minister. Um, I started off in the Presbyterian Church, and then I, then I became um, indecent and disorderly, and became United Methodist. Um, so um, so I, love, I love being a part of this ecumenical community. Uh, I love being a part of a community where, uh, you know, the labels don't matter so much, just the reality of, of the journey we're on. So when I was uh, a United Methodist pastor for about 25 years here in Arizona, uh, I had a chance uh, ultimately to come on the staff of the United Methodist Church in Nashville. And uh, it was uh, in that experience as part of the general headquarters of the United Methodist Church that I became involved with uh, an effort to look at the spirituality of aging. And um, so it was about, I'd probably been there about eight years, and uh, uh, somebody I knew had been done, doing some research around what it's like to enter into retirement. And uh, his name was Jack Hansen. He worked with NASA. He was a research scientist. And he said, you know, I'm, I'm facing retirement, and I have no idea what's ahead for me. And he said, I think I'll do a research, on, research project on that. What do you think about that? I thought it was great. So he began to talk to me about his experience of what it's like to, to enter into this retirement journey. And as part of that process then, he and I began talking about where do we go from here. And I ended up, the, he and I ended up doing a book together. And there are copies of that book in the back. You're welcome to have a copy. Um, but it was an experience for us to say, not so much um, the, the financial part and not so much about where to live, but what is it like all the rest of it, what's it like? And one of the things that we came to is that one of the ways that people kind of resolve the issue about what's retirement about is the whole role of being a caregiver. Because as a caregiver, you know what your role is. You have a job. And even though it's all of the struggles that are with that, there is a certain comfort in knowing you've got a purpose. And that purpose is um, sometimes the caregiver. So anyway, that book came out of that and we continued to do some more work. Um, and then through that process, I got to know this work, the book uh, that we're talking about for 
today, No Act of Love is Ever Wasted. Isn't that a great title? No Act of Love is Ever Wasted. And we'll talk a little bit more. I'll share a few things about that book with you. So I just wanted to provide that framework for us. And if you go ahead and put the next slide up. So what I want you to know is that we have a, a missing uh, colleague with us, Regina Ford, who is with Posada Life. Regina Ford's been in, she's, she told me the other day, she's 68 years old. She's been in Green Valley for 30 years. Now, not many of us probably moved to Green Valley when we were 39 years old, right? So she knows this community. She's been everywhere. She's done everything. She's been with the newspaper, blah, 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 all kinds of things. And she now is with Posada Life, and Posada Life provides community services. It's actually a separate nonprofit from La Posada, and those community services are available to all of us in the community of Green Valley. So just to, just to know, um, that's her role now. Uh, she has a real passion about this work, and unfortunately she had a medical appointment today she could not get out of. Uh, she had to do that. So we're, we're going to be calling on Regina in spirit here, channeling her spirit, because she's got tremendous energy. Uh, as a dramatist, she's been directing plays here at the community theater and all the rest, so she's just an amazing woman. So we are, we are missing Regina today. But in terms of introducing myself a little more, the first thing I want to say is that I was born old. <laughs> I really was. You know, I, I never got into the you know, the kind of the current scene. And, and my wife, on the other hand, Donna, is always so contemporary. She's up to date on all the pop culture and stuff. And uh, so this summer, we went up to Winslow, Arizona. And she talked about this song that has to do with standing on the corner. I had no idea who she was talking about, what the song was, and I thought, well, the Eagles, that's that's that football team, right? From That's just kind of a, an image of what I'm like. I am just old, I've always been old. Um, I was 26 when I went to a webinar, I went to a seminar on retirement planning. You can imagine, at 26, everybody else in the group was like 55 or whatever. So that's just me, that's, I am just old. And so everything about me is old and now I'm old, so I'm feeling more and more comfortable. But I'm also, I'm also a second generation Green Valley person too, by the way. My parents bought a place across the street and um, that was in 1978. And I was pastoring a church uh, here in Arizona. And so I started to come down. We just fell in love with Green Valley, even at age 35. So there's my old thing coming out again. And so that began kind of the journey for us. And ultimately, we ended it up back here in, uh, in Green Valley. My mother um, outlived my father. He died in 1992. And uh, we... Um, continued to really value her being here. We felt like this was a perfect community for her. But it was a, somewhere in that time period, I ended up getting the call to go to uh, Nashville, Tennessee. I've been pastoring a church in Tucson. So I, uh, I ended up going ahead and taking that job. And a few years later, <clears throat> 2004, uh, my mother called up. They, they were winter people from South Dakota. My mother called up and she was panicky. And she said, um, I'm here in, in Green Valley, I'm at our casita, and I can't figure out how to get out of this development. Casa Paloma too, across the street. All the little circles and you have to know when to turn left and when to turn right. And she was scared to death. My mother was that one of the smartest people I've ever met. Um, she got a master's degree in pharmaceutical science in 1937. Um, she was top of her class. And she was always reading everything, always up to date, had a great vocabulary, always eager to learn. And she had never lost control until then. 
And uh, just part of my journey is uh, appreciation for the fact that when that began to happen for her, it changed my relationship with her as well. And I began to see her in this vulnerable kind of capacity and to value her in a very different way. And to see this vulnerability um, on the one hand, on the other hand, to know that there was a role that, that we all needed to play. Um, we made a decision that as uh, her children to encourage her um, to make this change and the change was for her to relocate back to this little town in South Dakota and there she had a small apartment and her car. Now the car is a big deal but in South Dakota in the winter time what we figured is she had probably a better chance uh, of surviving by going to the grocery store, which was a half a block away, and the bank, which is less than a half a block away, and the, and the uh, beautician, which was also a block away. The other alternative was that she might freeze to death walking from there, from her studio over there. So. The decision was that she's, she kept her car for a period of time, for about four or five years, and she did remarkably well. But then finally it was time for her to go into assisted living where she passed away. So there's a personal buy-in on that level, and more recently a couple of our family members who have moved here to Green Valley also now appear to be coming down with dementia. So for me personally, there's an issue with that. So why are we here? Uh, let's go ahead and take that next slide up. Why a forum series on this? And then secondly, why should the church be interested? Next page. So some facts about dementia. According to Alzheimer's Association, someone in America is diagnosed with dementia every 67 seconds. It's now apparently they've upgraded that to every 65 seconds. Estimates vary, but according to CDC, there are about 6.2 million people that have Alzheimer's disease, which is the leading cause of dementia, but not the only cause of dementia. And dementia is an umbrella term. And we'll take the next slide and with that. As you can see, Alzheimer's is the dominant reason for dementia. But there's also, and we think probably our mother had vascular <coughs> dementia, which means that it's kind of a step down. They do pretty well, they go on for a while, and then they have another mini stroke perhaps, and they drop down a little bit more, and they begin to continue in that journey. Lewy body, form of dementia, uh, much more aggressive in some ways, more blatant, and then frontal temporal which is also quite <coughs> difficult. And early onset dementia is oftentimes with the frontal dementia, as I understand it. Now, I'm not a medical doctor, I'm not a medical person, and we'll have a medical doctor with us next week, either here in person, which we hope, or via Zoom, and he'll be able to answer some of those questions. In fact, one of the things uh, that I would like to ask you to do is to make a list of, uh, just let me, email me any questions that you might have that I can pass on to the doctor, so the doctor will have a little bit of a head start. And in um, the fourth session, we have a lawyer, and I'd ask you to do the same thing. If you have questions you particularly want to ask a lawyer about, just, you know, I'll give you my email address in a minute, but if you're just welcome to do that, to email me, and I'll feed these into these two professionals, and they'll have a chance then to kind of shape their content and material. Okay, so why this, why this series? Uh, why Green Valley? This is where I really miss Regina, because Regina is a real strong champion for Green Valley. She really sees how Green Valley has a lot of resources with regard to this issue. And in session three, you'll meet Linda Laird, Linda, whose husband had dementia before he passed away. Linda is from Kansas, and she'll tell you this story probably, but um, she had been in this small town in Kansas, 
and um, her husband was beginning stages of dementia, so she talked back in Kansas <clears throat> with her doctor in this small town. And the doctor said to her, you know, you really want to be in one place or the other. They were going back and forth between Kansas and, and Green Valley. And, they, and the doctor said to her, you're going to be better off in Green Valley because there are so many more resources in terms of availability of uh, specialists and doctors than in this small town in Kansas. So that's the decision that she made, she and her husband made, and they came back here and then, and then lived here until they died. But those are the kind of things that we want all of us to know about. Because the reality is that most of us uh, don't know about these resources and don't feel like we need to know about those resources until we absolutely have to. So one of the goals that we have for this uh, forum series is to help you to know what is available in the community. So. We are very interested in knowing if you have suggestions uh, of resources that have been helpful to you. Um, actually, one of our staff, one of our ta staff members, one of our task force members, Chris McLeod, if you'd raise your hand, Chris. Chris is going to be our resource um, collector. So if you have uh, suggestions for community resources, pass them on to Chris, and then we'll pass them on to you to let you know what's going on. We also feel like this series is important because um, of online resources that are incredibly abundant and helpful in regard to this issue of dementia. One of our church members here is in a support group for dementia, her husband has dementia. Where is the support group? Well, it's a Zoom support group. And they, she joins in together with people from all over the world. Um, on this Zoom call. And uh, dementia is particularly something that afflicts uh, English-speaking countries. So Australia, England, and the US, Canada. Why is that? Because we tend to live longer right now because our standard of living, our life expect expectancy seems to be greater. And the number one correlation with dementia has to do with age, right? Not so much genetics, but the fact that the older we get, the more likely we are uh, to, um, to come to the, this uh, vascular condition. So, so then, uh, next is, why should the church be doing this? Well, um, health-wise, and again, uh, Regina would be a great cheerleader for that, this is a diverse population, typically, in the church. We have younger people, maybe not a lot of younger people. I'm 74, and I'm probably one of the younger ones in our congregation. <laughs> but we have some younger people, and we have older people. We have people in different conditions. So it's a, it's a great way to get it out to the whole community. And that's another capacity that we have. We have a capacity to speak to the whole community, and we're not promoting our program or our nonprofit uh, or our for-profit, which most of the things in Green Valley are, right? Most of the uh, memory cares, I think, are, non uh, are for-profit. And some of you may know if, that, if that's true. We are called to serve as a church, to serve and to be there and to be present with people. And that's part of our, our understanding of who we are. And other, the last thing is just to say, it's important for us because we have failed so often in the church. And what's our failure? Pastor Doug, who's here in the front row, by the way, our, our senior pastor, uh, Ken Benson and I have talked about this, how little we have done in our ministry to relate to this area of concern. And we recognize that there is so much more that we have capacity to do. And so um, that's an important dimension, that there's more for the church to do, but it's also an important thing to identify that the church has the power to bless and to curse. And if you look into the Bible, you'll see that there are places where, for example, people with disabilities are basically not to enter the altar, not to enter the temple. There are 
items that relate to that in the scriptures, and the church has oftentimes internalized those attitudes towards various populations. So it is very important for us as a church to say, we love you, we hear you, we see you, we bless you. You, the people with dementia, and you, the people who care for those with dementia. Well, then we have Jesus. You know, um, the church would be just fine if we didn't have Jesus all around sometimes. It's like, <laughs> this guy keeps, you know, nagging our conscience and reminding us uh, that we have some other uh, a direction and purpose. So, how many of these relate to dementia? Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. How many times people um, are caregiving for someone and they grieve the memories that they've had and grieve the way that their loved one is changing over the years. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. And there are justice issues when it comes to issues of dementia, aren't there? Issues about how expensive care is for people, how affordable it is, how available it is to people with all income levels. So we're fortunate that we have a very active Pima Council on Aging that really advocates for people that have issues, particularly around access to resources, but we're also recognizing there are issues about that. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy, and blessed are the poor in heart. So what I want to offer to you is sort of guidelines for us as we make this journey together. I invite you, hopefully, that you'll be with us for all six of these sessions. First of all, that this is offered in the name of Christ, but it's open to all. Um, we are not going to be spending uh, time really talking about uh, our faith dimension apart from this one session. Um, most of that will be conveyed to you through that book, uh, No Act of Love Is Ever Wasted. That is very definitely a very deep and wonderful spiritual book. Very encouraging. <laughs> Most of what we'll be focusing in are, are issues that relate to how the care is offered. We are be, we're going to be having people, presenters, people come in here who I don't know what their religious background is, if they have any at all. But they are not going to be witnessing to the Christian faith. So these are people that probably come from all kinds of different traditions and no tradition, etc. So that's an important reminder. And then uh, our goal to reduce the, I'll have to put these up where my glasses can sit, to reduce stigma associated with dementia, encourage teaming up so people don't feel isolated, and foster what now the phrase is, that's kind of an in phrase apparently, is a dementia-friendly community. So what does that mean? What is a dementia-friendly community? Well, that'll be something that we can talk about. When I was coming here today, uh, right in front of me was a uh, a car that had a sticker on it that said autism awareness and that's what it was promoting. I thought isn't that neat? Autism awareness, dimension awareness. Mm -hmm. How do we become aware of dementia, recognize what it is, and care for people? And there are a number of issues that are with regard to that. There are certainly wonderful things about Green Valley in regard to this, but there's also more that we can do and learn. And that was part of the conversation, again, that Regina helped us to recognize. There's just more that we can do with all of this. Um, I'm going to ask for your input in just a couple of minutes, but I just wanted to make sure we got this quote first. Uh, this is from the book, um, and I just love this, this quote here. Any loving action puts love into the world. The deed doesn't need to be acknowledged in order to be effective. We don't need to be recognized as the lover. We don't need to be thanked for our love to be helpful. We love, not for our own satisfaction, but for the pure act of pour out love, pouring out love lavishly on the object of our love. 
If our love doesn't have visible results, that doesn't matter. Love has gone out into the universe. Ultimately, the act of loving will affect us because loving without any expectation of return changes us, stretches us, transforms us. It teaches us how to love as Christ loves. That is uh, Jane Thibault, um, gerontologist uh, at the University of Louisville in Kentucky. And her practice of both teaching and then working with families with dementia, you can imagine how difficult it is day after day after day to meet a client and have some of the same issues and some of the hard realities that you have to communicate over and over again. She's an amazing person, by the way. She's written uh, about a half a dozen books, um, and I absolutely love um, her writing, uh, the way that she talks about spirituality and aging, valuing the journey that we're on as we um, get older and, and begin to decline our physical capacities and mental capacities. So I encourage you to, to look her up. Um, so now the question is, how shall we relate to one another? Thank you, Penny, for advancing the slides. She's trying to keep me going here so I don't bog down. Um, so how shall we relate to one another? First of all, my feeling with us as a group, that you as part of this, is that we re relate with honesty and relentless optimism. Isn't that a great term? Yeah. Uh, we were working with some people who were trying to learn how to write, and they were young pastors, and they were all eager to write. But, you know, we, they were so used to being criticized for everything they did. So we want all of us um, to be relentlessly optimistic with each other. There is no blueprint, my pastor says. He said this so many times in the last two years during the COVID crisis. There's no blueprint for guiding the congregation through the pandemic. There's no handbook for that. And he's right about that. But the reality is there is no real blueprint for those of you who are caring for someone with dementia. There, it is just simply this ongoing journey, this relationship, and how you make it work. Sensitivity. Some of us come today with um, curiosity and others with aching hearts. So to be respectful of, of how we are different. Also, to let you know, we are recording the presentations. Now, um, during our time with the presenters, um, the other presenters here with both uh, Dr. Hector next week and with uh, Linda and then with uh, uh, Mr. Longenbaugh, during those times, we will focus on their presentations to record, but we do not want to record anything where any of you are, have, a, have a chance to share and ask a vulnerable question. So we will turn the recording off, and if we don't turn the recording off, we'll make sure we edit out anything that's of personal nature. So we want your confidence to be able to ask the questions that come from the heart, but also to say, you know, we are not going to be do anything with that. But there are a number of people who are not able to be here today because of the fact that they may be involved in caring for a loved one. So um, now the question is, what would you like to add to any of that that we've talked about here? What questions do you have or comments? Anything that you, that you think really resonates or something that I left out? Anybody want to chime anything here? How'd I do, task force? Did I do okay? Yes, sir. Is the book available locally, or do you have to get it online? Well, we're, we've got some ordered for the church, um, and uh, they should be coming in this week. Um, but we did run out. I think we've sold about 30 copies of it so They're far. Available on Amazon. They are available on Amazon, right. But I have not um, had our book shop here order that, which I should have done, but I have not done that. Yes, yeah. I love the thought of all of us are here for the same reason, and we will all share together. That's a wonderful statement. We are all here together. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. That is so lovely to think about that. We are not alone. This journey is so easy for us to feel isolated and alone. So thank you very much. 
That's my neighbor, by the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if we miss one, we can go on the church website and watch it. They will be they will be on the website at some point. It, it may not be the immediate next week, but yes, we we are going to offer that capacity. Um, and be sure you mark down that March the 9th, is it March? No, February the 9th, is, um, it's our thrift sale here at this church, which has been going on for 50 years. This is the 50th thrift sale for this church, and the last one, theoretically. So we are, we're at, when the thrift sale happens, that means every single room in this place is just packed, so we will not... Uh, meet that session. We'll have a week off and then we'll come back. Mm -hmm. And Chris McGlott's got something she wants me to say. Just that the book is available as an e-book and it's cheaper. Okay. Did Order? everybody hear that? It's available as an e-book and it's cheaper. And what's okay. your email? So Chris, you will answer your questions about how to how to do that if you're not familiar with the e-book thing, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Your, your email address, Jerry, was where you're going to get Oh, yeah. That. that was supposed to come up here pretty soon. Where'd that go? Next one. Oh. Let's go out to two more, two more slides. One more. Um, so here's, here's the deal with my email. Um, if you would revjhaas at gmail.com, pretty simple. If you'd send me an email about either uh, the medical doctor's uh, presentation or um, Mr. Longenbaugh. Okay? RevJHaas at gmail.com. <clears throat> and if and the resources would go back to her. Chris McGaugh. Chris McGaugh, correct. Okay. So here's what I'd like to do now is to invite you to move into smaller groups. Um, and we have task force people who are kind of scattered around. We just want to come uh, have a chance for you to share something. If you back that slide up one. I think we'll get to that question. What are your hopes for our time together? And then this, uh, the task force members will take a, take a moment to make uh, a note on that. After, we, after you meet together in, in a small group for 10 minutes, we'll give you about 10 minutes to do that. Um, then we'll come back and we've got just a couple of short little videos that I think you'll, um, what you'll value. So, um, so why don't we do this? Uh, let's, um, you can gather around where you are, and I think groups of four would be about ideal. So if you can just move your, this is part of the reason we want to be in a uh, place with chairs. If you'd be with a group of, of four people, and ask yourself that question, what would be your hopes for the time together that we have? We'll do about 10 minutes conversation with that, and um, go back from there, so okay? Friends, if we could come back together again, um, I'd be interested in, uh, we don't have, I don't want to take a lot of time to hear back from all of the groups, uh, but I did, I did want to have just a, a couple of uh, moments uh, for anybody that, that would like to share something that feels really valuable, that would be for the whole group, so um, as, we're, as we're coming back together, a couple of those uh, suggestions comments. Anybody like to share something that they think would be valuable for the whole group? Once, <laughs> twice. Anybody? Anybody like to share something? Yes, yes, sure. Um, one of the things that we thought is that information is a wonderful thing. And that's great, but once you're informed, then where do you go? Okay, once you're informed, where do you go? Very good question. So, yeah. you know, I'm looking, looking for, once that happens, what direction can we go into the community and yes. in, in our churches right. and, and be of help? Right, okay. So how do we go to the next level from awareness, education, to involvement, to action? Very good question. Uh, we're praying about that one, and you know there are ways that you could do thousands of things. I think in this whole area, uh, the inspiration for us uh, comes out of a church in Georgia, Due West United Methodist Church. Now I don't know where they got that name, Due West, uh, but it's in Marietta, and they have this incredible website called Loving Through Dementia, and we're recommending that people go there because not only will you 
be inspired by what um, is on the website, but you'll see what the multiple ministries that this church is involved with. It's just incredible. Um, so, yeah, what what's next after this? That's a very good question. Uh, two or three other things. You made a point of the availability of help. <coughs> there is none. You may think so, but there is none. You, you're speaking out of experience, That's and I appreciate that true. very much. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we, if there is none whatsoever, then we also want to talk about that with community resource people here, um, because we do what have, particularly with Adrena, we have a, a, a connection with Posada Life. And their adult daycare program is one thing. I can tell you I've been up to Banner, Old Hammer, and Dementia. I would really take my blood. Yes, well, I understand you. And I, in my family, we have some very similar concerns and frustrations. So thank you for, for getting that voice in there. Um, Chris, I'm going to hold off with you for I a just minute. Have, just a quick question. Could you repeat the questions? Yes. Oh, yeah. Repeat the question. Repeat the comments. Okay, the first comment was we're getting informed, but we need to take the next step. The second comment this gentleman made is that there are no resources. There is no resource here. Right? Did I paraphrase that right? Okay. So thank you. Um, anything else? Yes, sir. The caregivers can get burned out. I, work, I live in Plano, Texas, and they had a day, one day a week, three people, the caregiver for disabled people could go. And here in Green Valley, it'd be nice if the caregiver out of seven days could get some time. Caregiver, a break for the caregivers. This is a, a specific um, program request and opportunity that we have or somebody has here in the community. So part of it is, yes, there are definitely, there's huge need for caregivers to have support that they need, absolutely. Yes, sir, thank you. I think we need specific information on ideas, ways people should communicate with people with dementia. Perfect, because very they good. often get angry, right. and so the caregiver needs to know how to deal with that, how to respond to it, how to not get to that place in the first place. You know, I think that's really, really great. Um, and that may, this may or may not address that particularly, but it may also provide a little bit of a perspective on this issue, um, is this particular little YouTube. Two minutes long, okay? I'll just show you this. This comes out of the United Kingdom. They have a campaign nationwide about dementia awareness. So they, the government supports this program of uh, government awareness. So this is kids interviewing people with dementia. Hello, I'm
Stay away from boys. This was my stalk with you. So that's a, a little bit of a, a comic relief, perhaps. Three simple changes I tell all of my records. Um, it is uh, it is a bit of a comic relief in a way, but at the same time, it also helps us to kind of move beyond thinking that um, it has to all be on one level. Um, there is a particular book that I've just come across, uh, which is called Contented Dementia. And it's a woman whose mother had dementia, and she learned the art of being able to talk with her mother in such a way so that they continue to build positive relationship. And she calls the, the good um, interactions as green, green interactions. And the bad ones are red. And so her, her goal was to develop as many green interactions with her mother as possible. And she was able to do that with her mother. She developed a certain list of things to do and not to do. One thing she said is never ask questions. Because questions always throw the person into a, a tizzy. Who's asking the question? What is this question? Things I don't know. And so continuing to, to um, not do anything to threaten the self-esteem of the person with dementia. So that is one of the resources that we've got on this resource list. Um, and uh, Chris McGlott has that. So I'm going to ask Chris if she would say a word, uh, because I have uh, one more um, video that I want to share with you today. Okay, I'm going to keep this quick. Um, I do have several things available for you. One of them that Jerry put together is a list of different books and um, a website that one loving through dementia that he told you about from the Due West Church. And, oh, an online course, okay. Um, he's listed two online courses here that are given free from the University of Tasmania in Australia. And on each of those two courses, I have a full sheet of information to tell you what's in them. And then, I went to the courthouse and found out that the Pima County Bar Foundation provides free to the public um, winter series on adult guardianship and conservatorship, which is sometimes something you have to do with a loved one. They have three different times. They are free, three different dates. They are Zoom, so you don't have to be local, so you can send this information to friends. But you do have to register two days beforehand. And we'll have other things. So we are trying to make well, a list of whatever resources there are currently available for you uh, to have. And we want to work together, as Fran mentioned, that we work together to find out what those resources are. That makes sense. Um, I also mentioned Posada Life. We have a few of these brochures. Chris, I should have given you these oh. also about Regina. Regina will hopefully be with us next week as well. And there is one other uh, thing about uh, Posada Life. I want to mar have Marge come and talk a little bit about the Memory Cafe and that work. Well, af <coughs> after I read that book, <coughs> or we read that book in a group, I decided I wanted to do something, so um, I went down to uh, La Posada and uh, went to, to be a volunteer for something that's called the Memory Cafe. You may have seen it in the paper, and it happens once a month. And um, <clears throat> this is what they say. A welcoming place for those experiencing memory loss, their friends, family, and caregivers. Be part of our community. We invite you to come socialize with others in a safe, supportive, and fun environment. And what happens there, it's like an hour and a half on a, on a Saturday. And uh, you have snacks, 
and music, always live music. And so that is kind of one, one of the things, as most people with dementia really are in tune with. And uh, they play some games. They have some entertainment. Um, uh, one, of, one time they asked a question of everybody. Um, what was your favorite television show when you were growing up? And, and they could remember those, those kinds of things. And it's just a really fun time to be together. And, and it's only, you know, an hour and a half or so much. But it's just, it doesn't cost anything. It's open to the community. And that's beside, that isn't the daycare service. They also have that. But this, this is something different. It's called Memory Cafe. So then we have a few more uh, brochures for Posada Live. Again, they have, uh, our understanding is that is the only adult daycare option right now in Green Valley. That's $75 a day, my understanding. So that is a respite for uh, people who are caregiving, uh, people with dementia. So certified, insured, it's, a, it's one of those programs. One of the things that, um, is also particularly with that Wicking Center um, Understanding Dementia course online, which I took. It's seven weeks long, and it's it's pretty thorough, particularly around the physiology. Uh, a lot of stuff I never I, I didn't know the difference between a a neuron and a neurotic. I guess so. Um, you know, we all have a lot to learn, but in in that whole relationship, the issue about um, caregiving and options and treatments, which is the huge issue. The medical things, the medical breakthroughs that seem to be happening right now are important, but we also know that the impact is so much around the community and around the family members that that's where a lot of the work has to be done. And they have a number of things listed, but one of the most powerful ones uh, that's now being identified is the power of music because music you know, relates to us somehow they think beyond any kind of a, a normal kind of processing of the brain but it gets to us on a deeper level so it's some amazing videos if you go online and look at music and dementia just google that for um, programs on youtube and you'll find all kinds of resources about that the power of music to impact us and they say that the key for the music is that it's uh, what that individual particularly enjoyed between the ages of 15 and 25. That that's the memory that logs in, logs in there. Um, so for me, the Eagles would not work. Um, <laughs> uh, and, uh, and other things would not. But, but whatever those are, those are very important for people um, as, as a way of uh, experiencing that. Again, if you, if you go to the website, Lo Loving Through Dementia, you'll find a number of resources uh, that can help you, including a caregiver's guide, interviews of people um, who are caregivers, and we will have one who will be with us, uh, particularly to give a presentation, but those kind of resources are important for us to team up on this. We have one song that we thought you might be interested in, in um, experiencing, and this is a song that comes again out of that church in Georgia. Um, and before I, I play that with you, let me see if there's anything our other task force members need to say. Anything else? Yes, ma'am. I'd just like to thank the people for sharing freely. Uh, I know so word of a word of thanks if I may quote you, yeah, word of thanks for the people for sharing, for being open. Yeah, I appreciate that. And the other thing is, um, all these this information, can we get it over there? Is that where it's at? That's the that's the person with the resources there, Chris, right. Okay, so you yeah. have enough sheets for everybody. <coughs> we, we if may not, or may I'll not have. have. I'll get them. But just stay with her and she'll make sure we get uh, get those things. So so thank you for that. And sure. yeah. you mentioned that the adult daycare center was $75 a day. Yeah, it's gone. 
when my husband went, he was a veteran. And I, I don't know if it was only if you served during the war, but the government paid for it. Yeah, okay. So that's a good resource. See, these are the kind of resources. That I don't, you didn't, probably didn't hear that, but she's saying that her husband was a vet and uh, acted during the war, so actually the government ended up paying for that adult daycare um, concern. So thank you. And I know there are resources through the VA, et cetera, so much stuff that, that we still don't know about. We're really st still trying to, to pull everything together, but we wanted to share this much for you now. So I want to try to keep us uh, as close as I can to an hour, and I'm just a few minutes after that. So this is the closing song um, that uh, we want to share with you as um, a kind of a, a, a word of, of prayer and hope. Um, I, wrote a, I wrote a prayer this morning uh, with regard to this, this journey that we're on together. And I, and I thank you so much for being a part of this and look forward to seeing you again um, next week, hopefully. So here we are. Um, this is the closing. Uh, we'll we'll um, hear this song. No.